In this video, we're going to finish the skin on frame kayak. In the last video, we uh, completed the frame. In this video, we're going to do the seat, uh, put the skin on it, paint it, and test it. The next step in this project is we need to have some sort of a, a seat or a bench. Uh, obviously, you're going to be in this thing, and you got to be somewhere, and you can't just be on these ribs. So I took the strong back and ripped it in half so that we have two one by four pieces here. So from the uh, back of the cockpit, which is uh, uh, this stringer that uh, goes all the way across, all the way to the front of the cockpit, where the uh, carlins meet here, is seven feet. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, we're going to need a little bit longer uh, I'm thinking uh, maybe like three inches in front of and behind uh, the cockpit to extend that. So we're going to cut uh, the board at seven foot six inches. <laughs> expecting it to look like. So I'm going to go ahead and round off these edges uh, here a little bit uh, to just kind of give it a little bit more of a finished look and uh, then I'll drill some holes and start lashing these pieces in. So using my trim router just taking the sharp edge off the outside on the wide side here and then also round it off the top. So I have the boards for my seat placed in here uh, the way I want and I went ahead and uh, clamped them into place. Uh, really it's, it's just this one that's exactly where I want it right now and then what I'll do is uh, drill a couple holes and then start lashing. So I've got my floor lashed in and I think it's looking pretty good. It's time to figure out how to get a skin on this. So the instructions call for uh, this area to be fared. Uh, these sharp edges obviously uh, can puncture the claw uh, on, on all these stringers and then uh, down here where uh, the keel meets the, uh, uh, the stem and also the same thing in the front done quite a bit of work to try to uh, try to reduce this as much as possible uh, you know I've, I've kind of cut these on angles and uh, you know to try to uh, not have a point sticking out here uh, more so on these other lower stringers and uh, I've trimmed this here and I've done quite a bit of sanding down here but I think that it's still going to be a little bit uh, uh, more of a problem here than, uh, than what I've done so far. So, surprise, surprise, I'm going to do something a little bit different than what the instructions call for. Saved a few milk jugs and I'm just, uh, just going to like drape that over this area in the front and the back. Uh, try to, you know, isolate any of these sharp points that will dig through uh, my skin. So, the idea here is I'm going to go ahead and lash this uh, into place here and uh, use that to cover all these sharp spots. I've got my plastic tied up at the top and uh, down here at the bottom. It's just a single piece of, uh, of the, the artificial sinew, but I'm expecting that the cloth is going to hold this more in place than, uh, uh, than the uh, lashing. I'm going to go ahead and uh, add a relief cut here so that the material can fold over, and uh, probably uh, go ahead and uh, you know, add another lashing there to kind of hold it folded over a bit. So the idea is that this will give uh, the cloth a smooth 
uh, surface to uh, to be upon. You know, this is probably one of the highest tensions because you kind of stretch the uh, cloth over the uh, nose and, uh, and tail of the boat. So this is going to be one of the areas where, uh, you know, the, the cloth is going to be under the most stress. So I may go ahead and add a couple stainless steel uh, staples here just to kind of keep this centered a little bit better. I'm a little hesitant to because at this point there's no metal in here. So uh, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe it's dumb. So, but... Uh, uh, I've tried to avoid metal in this altogether, so it would be, uh, uh, be something, I guess, a little silly to to worry about it if it uh, really adds to the project. But on the other hand, uh, it's kind of nice to say that there isn't any at all. Well, I've decided to go ahead and add a staple, but I put it here on the side, but just in case... Uh, you know, you get some corrosion or something happens there, it won't puncture the uh, uh, fabric. I was originally planning on stapling it right in here, but uh, I think we'll be pretty safe there. And sometimes uh, stainless steel will still corrode, even though uh, stainless steel is supposed to be stainless, uh, it isn't always. In the front of the boat, I decided to go with a slightly different configuration here. Uh, the distance on the on the stem is is much greater uh, from where it meets up to the keel here all the way up here and then additionally this is trimmed down so much that uh, it's not even going to be close so uh, I can go with that I may end up adding a piece there if after I start to sew on the skin it seems like it's a little closer than I think it is going to be but I think we should be fine so it's time to uh, get our skin on this and uh, the instructions that came with this kayak uh, have the idea that uh, you skin uh, the bottom half, and skin the top half, and then put a rub rail at the, uh, you know, at the uh, main gunnel here. Uh, I did some internet searching, and Brian over at Cape Falcon Kayak has a method that I like much better. Uh, there's not a seam in the center, so then you don't need the rub rail. And uh, he, he uses nylon. Uh, there's also uh, uh, another guy uh, over at Kudzu Craft, and uh, he uh, suggests polyester. And polyester is what I decided to go with. I don't expect to really be up and on the ground or uh, hitting stuff too much, so the extra strength of the nylon I don't think is going to be too important. I'm going to go ahead with the uh, polyester. I suppose that if, uh, if I need to replace it, I can. Uh, i got 15 bucks tied up in this uh, five yards. And the material is wide enough to uh, wrap all the way around the kayak at the widest spots. So, worst comes to worst, I'm out of 15 bucks in some time. Also, I'll be uh, doing my stitches with this uh, dental floss. So, I believe that... Uh, uh, that'll work out. Uh, Brian over at Cape Falcon uh, Kayak suggested I get the Reach brand, but uh, they didn't have any of that in stock at the store. So I'm just going to be using this Top Care. I've got my kayak flipped upside down, and now I've got my fabric draped over the kayak. So I'm trying to have it about center. Uh, in other words, uh, the center of the cloth is right at the keel, give or take a little. And I've got most of the slack in the cloth all at one end. Just with the idea that, uh, you know, if I need a bigger piece of cloth for something, then uh, I'd much rather have, you know, two feet of, uh, of extra cloth uh, all in one piece than two one-foot sections. I have my fabric temporarily uh, held in place with these spring clamps. And then also down at the sides. So I'm going to need to uh, trim this cloth here along the, uh, the profile uh, of the stem. I have to do something a little bit different than uh, what Brian at Cape Falcon was doing because the uh, shape of this kayak is so much different. But I'm going to try to follow as much as I can, uh, you know, in, in uh, theory at least, I guess. 
of what he was doing here. So, all right, so I'm going to try to hold. this without scratching it. And I got this cutter from Harbor Freight. And the nice thing about the heat cutter is that it's kind of melting the tips of the fabric as I go. So it's not going to unravel. Go ahead and get started here with a bit of a whip stitch. I got this curved needle. And I think I may have cut the fabric bit too close here, which is a good thing that I've got extra done at the other end. I'm just kind of working my way down here, uh, grabbing a little bit of the cloth. But I think that this is going to be strong enough. Uh, this dental floss is actually quite a bit stronger than you would think. Uh, I just tried to get a piece and, and just break it in my hands, and I wasn't really quite able to do that. I mean, I break it in my mouth enough, but I guess my teeth must have some sharp spots. So anyway, uh, I got one line of dental floss going down. I have another line going up. So even if one of them gets break, broken, then the seam should still be good. So I've got the, uh, the stern sewed up. Uh, in fact, it's double sewed. I uh, went down once and then came back and uh, re-sewed it. So if that thread breaks, uh, you know, this won't become unraveled. And it's time to go do the other end. So I'm pulling this fabric tight. With the nylon, uh, the way that Brian over at Cape Falcon had you do it was, uh, you know, you'd measure it and then sew it off the boat and then... Uh, uh, and then stretch it back over. But this is polyester, so I think that it's going to work out better for me if I, uh, if I stretch this first and then sew it uh, directly in place. So I pulled this material really tight, but the trouble I had is by stretching it so far lengthwise, uh, it was really kind of uh, making it less uh, wide, and it wasn't really quite wide enough. Uh, to make it over, uh, you know, to the, uh, the to the carlins, which are at the top of the boat, but underneath right now. So right now I have it stretched uh, so that it's you know reasonably snug up here, but uh, we do have some wrinkles here. But uh, when I go to stitch it on the other side, uh, they pull out, and then additionally. Uh, the idea is that you uh, hit this with a heat gun uh, when you're all done, and that causes the polyester to shrink. So, uh, you know, or you can use a clothes iron as well, but cause the polyester to shrink. So I think I'll be able to get this tight enough. I'm getting ready to trim the front here. Uh, like I mentioned before, I got this stretched not as far as I can, but about as far as I think I need to. And I kind of have my... Uh, cloth held in place here with the clamps. So I'm just pinching the fabric as I go down. I've got a couple runners in here. Uh, I guess it was just a little bit too tight. But I'm thinking that uh, when I cut this fabric, that uh, that's not going to really cause too much of a problem. So like I say, I'm just kind of pinching it, and then sewing, and then pinching it down a little bit lower. And, uh, and the bows come out pretty nice. So in the same way I did the stern, I've got the bows uh, sewed up uh, all the way up here. Just a little bit of a pocket. And I went ahead and flipped this upside down. And uh, all I've done so far is uh, just using these spring clamps. Just clamp the fabric so it's up. Uh, in the back, I've clamped it up here. But then in addition, I started trying to pull it tight across this way. You know, the skin's supposed to be pretty tight. And the plan's going to be, uh, I'm just going to cut just a little bit of material at, it, at the time. And then maybe... Uh, you know, maybe would it be about six inches, just six inches at a time I'll sew it. 
and uh, uh, tie it off, cut a little bit more, sew it, tie it off, until I make it all the way up to, uh, to the back of the cockpit here. So using my hot knife, I've trimmed about 9 inches of the fabric here, and uh, I'll go ahead and stitch this up, and then trim a little bit more. I'm, uh, I'm not wanting to, uh, to cut more than I absolutely need to for now, uh, primarily because my concern is that I'll either cut too much or that I'll have a ton of it bunched up. Uh, so I'm thinking if I just go a little bit at a time uh, that that's going to work out a little bit easier. So the idea here is that you want this uh, fabric to be pretty tight. So, uh, you know, a lot of the guys talk about having it tight as a drum. I don't know. This fabric doesn't seem that strong that I want to, like, get it as tight as it could possibly be. But I'm still trying to get it snug. And what seems to be working is I'll pull it up from the bottom, and then I'm kind of clamping it. And then uh, instead of just pinching it with my fingers, I have a clamp here holding the fabric as well as I stitch it. One thing that wasn't apparent at first, uh, but it's starting to uh, become more apparent now, is that when you use the hot knife uh, to cut this fabric, you don't want to stretch it. Uh, the whole point of using the hot knife is that you get a nice uh, melted edge, which keeps the uh, fabric from fraying. So uh, you just want to cut uh, as the uh, material lays, and then uh, if you got to have a bigger ball here, of bunched up material, then uh, so be it. So I got the back of the kayak sewed up all the way to the back side of the cockpit. And the front side is clamped up so that the bottom uh, from here forward is uh, is tight enough, at least to what I'm thinking it needs to be. So that I've got some nice runners forming here on both sides, and I think that's from uh, I think that's from not uh, really uh, uh, sealing the end of the uh, fabric up very well. So, I really should have gone slower with the hot knife there. But, uh, well, it is what it is. So, I'm hoping that, uh, you know, that when I coat this, that uh, it's not going to matter too much. So, as I've been sewing this kayak up, I found that about two arm lengths of dental floss is the best. Anything shorter than that, and constantly reloading the needle. Once you get more than that, it seems like the floss will fray uh, before you're finished uh, sewing. So about two arm lengths seems to be a good amount. So, and the way that you do that is obviously just uh, thread this into the needle. Just tie it off on this end with a double. If you if you don't do a double, at least with this cloth, then this knot is too small and it just pulls through the through the fabric. Depending on whatever fabric you're using, you may need more. But another thing I found out is that this dental floss uh, knots up so easily that if you don't put an overhand knot at the needle end as well, then what ends up happening is the needle will move over on the thread a little bit, and then you'll get a loop. So it'll knot up, and then there'll be a loop left in the fabric. So this uh, this prevents that from happening. So first of all, you just come through. And then what I've been doing is actually putting a knot in the floss here. And 
And as I'm sewing, hold my fabric here, and then I'm putting a stitch, I guess right around an eighth inch every once in a while. That overhead now does get caught in the fabric. About every eighth inch is a stitch. And this is just, uh, I guess they call this a running stitch. And just sewing along. Now in the back, this was starting to become a little more critical. As I got closer towards the center of the kayak, because I guess the, uh, the tension on the cloth was higher as I got towards the center because there's more of it and I'm trying to hold it all tight. But after I make five, six or so stitches, then what I've been doing is tying it off. And I'll go around the needle five times. And just continue again. So the idea is that if something were to happen to the stitching, then the whole thing isn't going to unravel. May not make that much of a pro uh, an issue. May not be that much of an issue uh, once it's all painted and this uh, this is more of a uh, solid piece, but still. like to have that uh, being a little more secure. Also, in some places, the cloth is bunched up a little bit more, depending on how well it got cut. When it's bunched up a lot, it pushes the, uh, uh, pushes the stitch open. So by tying it off every once in a while, then, then I uh, avoid having it uh, real loose. I can, uh, I can pull it tight as I did here, for instance. And that's, uh, that's all I'm doing here is just stitching right up this seam. So, I've got my bow and my stern all sewed up. And the only thing left to do is to figure out how to attach this cloth in the cockpit. So, uh, I'm really kind of uncertain what I'm going to do here. Uh, and part of the reason being that uh, it seems like at this point maybe one of the better options would be to use staples, but uh, I've avoided it so far. So, I don't think that for as, uh, you know, as much tension that's on this cloth here, I'm not thinking that glue alone is going to hold it. So, I get the feeling that if I glue it, then, you know, as it heats up and so forth, then uh, it will be, uh, it'll be releasing. So, uh, I have to give this some thought. Well, I hate to do it, but uh, I've decided that uh, probably the best way to attach the cloth to the edge here, to the carlins, is with staples. So, I have the staples up under here. On every uh, inch and a half or two inches or so.
So I've got the uh, front section and the center section all stapled up, getting ready to do the back. And I just noticed that this cross member, which is the back of the cockpit, sits down uh, about this thickness of wood. So uh, it's a good thing that I've saved some of these uh, scrap pieces. Uh, you know, it's, it, until you're done, you know, you find out that, you know, there's all little pieces here and there that uh, come in handy. Uh, I think what I'm going to do, however, is I do have this piece. And I'm just going to glue it uh, just inside here, uh, just so it's at the top of the cloth. That's going to give me the uh, opportunity as well to, uh, to staple underneath so that, uh, you know, so that I can uh, continue with the hidden staples. I've got my fabric all stapled up in my cockpit here. Not too pleased with uh, how it came out here in the corners. Uh, I should have put in maybe like a radius or something like that instead. But, well, I didn't. So, uh, that is one thing that that's truly disappointing here. So, the instructions call for painting uh, the fabric with, a, with an oil-based paint. And uh, I may just do that. But I do have a couple gallons of latex left over. So I'm going to go ahead and test that on the scrap piece and uh, see how that seems to work out. Uh, just simply to keep the cost down. So I have some samples of this material that I painted with the latex paint. And after a few hours the paint's dried, uh, soaked through, uh, seems to be uh, adhering perfectly fine. I don't see a reason why I shouldn't use the latex paint. So that's what I'm going to do. So here I am, just uh, rolling on the first coat of latex paint. After applying my uh, second coat here, uh, I think that the, uh, the gaps in the cloth are, uh, are filled. Uh, the cloth is basically waterproof, except for some of these runners that formed when I was stretching the fabric. Uh, they still have some gaps. So uh, most of them are filled in, but I guess the uh, plan here is to uh, wait until this paint sets up a little bit, and then I'm going to come over with a brush and uh, paint them and keep on doing that until all those runners are filled. So I've got two coats of paint on the bottom of my kayak here, and it's looking pretty good. The only disappointment is that these runs in the fabric uh, still shine, show through pretty well. I'm going to flip it over and paint the top, and this project will be done. So I've got my first coat of paint here. And one thing I didn't cover too well when, uh, when I did the bottom is that you know, you got these spots here where it looks like the paint didn't even uh, get on there. Or I don't know if the cloth has soaked it up or what, but uh, don't get too worried about that. Uh, we'll get that on the second coat. It'll pick it up. But I think that if, you know, if you're constant, or if you're trying to get like a perfect first coat, then uh, you're going to end up screwing things up. You kind of push the paint all the way through the canvas, and I don't think that's something you want to do did a little bit of that, uh, you know, you can see some spots like there, for instance, where, uh, you know, where I did push the paint through a little bit, but, you know, I was trying to minimize that. Also, for some reason, the instructions say, make sure that you mask off your seat and don't get any paint on it. Uh, I at least wanted to get some paint on the surfaces I'd be sitting on. Uh, I just don't want the, uh, uh, those surfaces to get wet and raise the grain so I can get a good splinter in my butt. So uh, so I'm going to go ahead and get a nice coat of paint, at least on the seated surfaces anyway. So I've got a couple layers of paint on this, and I think it's time to put it in the water and see how she does. Okie dokie. This thing is super stable, which is one of the things that was important to me. I feel like, once feel like I was falling over.
project work out pretty good. Uh, a couple things I need to change about it. Uh, the floor is painted and once it's wet it's really super slick. So I'm going to have to put some kind of a non-skid surface on there so we don't slip and bust something. The other thing is that uh, for my weight that, uh, that canvas was uh, uh, stretching a little bit still even though it was painted. I think that if I were to do another one I'd go ahead and put another set of stringers along the bottom. Other than that, I think it worked out pretty well. Thanks for watching my video. Have a great day. Also, please leave any comments, suggestions, or thoughts in the comments below. And if you don't mind, hit that subscribe button for me. Thanks.